grounding is a technique to electrically connect conductive material to earth. This aim to ensure a safe electrical installation that is free from fault current that endangers the user's safety. Grounding system connects live or current carrying conductor with non-current carrying conductor, such as PV modules mounting, metal bass enclosure, and other conductive materials. Deep sense of grounding is not only causing electrical shock hazard, but also potentially causing installation to break, especially when hit by lightning strike. Grounding is needed to protect electrical installation and electronic devices from fault current and lightning strike, avoid different potential level on conductive materials through equipotential bonding, ensure safety for human and animals from direct touch live conductor or indirect touch energized conductive material due to insulation fault, electrical shock, and provide a safe current return path to dissipate lightning surge to the earth. One of the most common grounding system configuration that typically used in PV system is Terra Neutra or TN system. TN system connects the neutral line to a grounded conductor. We can implement three different TN system setups. First is the NC or TN combined, in which the neutral and protective earth or PE conductor are combined or PEN. This is the most common setup as this is the least expensive setup due to combination of PE and E conductor. Second is TNS or TN separate, in which neutral and protective earth or PE conductor are separated. Third is the NCS hybrid that combines the NC and TNS. The components of grounding system are equipment grounding that connects exposed non-current carrying conductive parts of the component to the ground. System grounding that provides grounding connection to the live electric part. Functional grounding that ensures the proper functionality of PV systems such as avoiding potential induced degradation or PID in the PV modules by connecting the negative pole of PV to the ground. The grounding is typically done in the power electronics. Lightning grounding that provides the current path to the ground during lightning strikes. Equipotential bonding bar that ensures that all the conductive parts are on the same voltage level and at zero potential. The bonding prevents the current flow through the conductive parts that may cause electric shock. Grounding electrode conductor that connects the bonding bar to the grounding electrode using grounding electrode clamp. Grounding electrode, the conductor that connects the grounding of PV systems to the soil. To ensure grounding resistance, measure the existing grounding resistance using earth ground tester for best reference. Prior installation, perform soil resistivity tests to obtain the best possible location for grounding installation and to identify the drive in depth of the grounding road to achieve low grounding resistance. Calculate the required length of the electrode to achieve 5 ohms resistance. To reduce the resistance, increase the road length or install several roads in parallel. From the following graph, at least 20 meters drive in depth of electrode is required for concrete soil to achieve 5 ohms. Other solution is to install several roads in parallel. Alternative to paralleling the grounding electrodes, it is preferable to use bare ring grounding system. Bare copper cable or copper clad cable of at least 25 mm square could be buried around the powerhouse or PV array. Build grounding box to maintain the grounding connection as well as the soil condition. Lightning strike is one of the threats to PV mini-grid systems due to location of the system that is in open area and far from high conductive structure. It may cause over-voltage on the line. The damage to the electrical installation might be caused by both direct strike to the structure and indirect strike, that is lightning striking near to the structure. The expected damages are broken PV module frame and glass. 
failures of the power electronics or other sensitive equipment due to over voltage, broken cable insulation, and electric shock hazard due to touch and step voltage caused by lightning electromagnetic impulse. In order to avoid the damage, lighting protection system or LPEs should be installed to protect the system from direct as well as indirect lightning strike. Lightning is high current electric discharge between cloud and ground, and between positive and negative charges in the cloud. The rapid discharge occurs when the insulating capacity of air breaks down because the charges grow large enough. Cloud to ground type of lightning is the type that occurs most often and causing damage. The possible damage due to lightning strikes are explained in IEC 623051 and distinguish as S1, S2, S3, and S4, depending on the location of the strikes. In order to determine the required protection measures against lightning strikes, the concept lightning protection zone is often defined. The zone is divided into external zones, LPZ0A that is susceptible to direct lightning strike with full lightning current, and LPZ0B with freeze of partial lightning current. Also internal zones, LPZ1 and LPZ2. Lightning protection system provides a protective zone to ensure the safety of the PV system as well as the people and animal against direct and indirect strikes to PV system by using Lightning rod or air termination to attract electric charge, for example from lightning Lightning mast Down conductor that provides the link between lightning rod and the grounding electrode Low resistant lightning grounding, acupotential bonding, separation distance that ensures enough distance is maintained between lightning mass, including the down conductor and conductive parts in the power plant, such as PV modules, frame, and powerhouse, should be maintained to prevent induced over voltage and electric arc. And surge protection devices to protect against indirect lightning strike or nervous strike to the grounded structure as well as inter- and intra-cloud lightning that generates electromagnetic field to induce transient current into the cable loop. Before we do quiz, let us start with some introductions. This is the first. Freestanding lightning mast with air termination draw that is designed using protective angle method is typically used in PV mini grid system. Protective angle is the angle between the road and the line projected to the ground. The protected area is in three dimensional concept forming a cone. The protective area depends on the heat of the air termination road from the ground and the class of LPS as defined in IEC 623053. The deep heat of the lightning mass should not be lower than 15 meters to achieve 20 meters radius of protected area, considering LPS class 3 for a PV system bigger than 10 kW peak. Extending the heat will only increase radius of up to 2 meters. Two type of air termination road can be used. Active or ESE road with ionization system that is activated by electromagnetic field produced by the storm and leads to the creation of upward streamer. The early initiation of the streamer increases the efficiency of lightning attraction and protection radius. This type provides larger radius to its passive counterpart. Passive or Franklin road that doesn't perform a special action during thunderstorm the protection of this road is based on its position, morphology, materials, and physical reaction that is performed due to electrostatic field. This is the second. SPD works by diverting the surge current to the ground during transient voltage. In this phase, the semiconductor switch in the SPD changes its state to low impedance and sadly short the connection to the ground. To have the SPD grounded is necessary and important because it reduces the risk of flashover in the system by providing equipotential bonding to the main grounding system, mitigates the surge in the system due to direct or indirect strike, 
and protects electrical and sensitive electronic equipment as well as PV modules. When installing SPD, you should consider this. Always use DC rated SPD at the DC system and AC for the AC system as the switch works differently in extinguish arc. The required SPD should be based on the distance between the installation and separation distance between external lightning protection and PV modules frame. SPD should not only be installed to protect the power line but also the communication line if the cables are coming from outside the powerhouse, specifically from grid inverter. Install the surge protection device close to the incoming cable. SPD in combiner boxes to protect the inverter and PV arrays against surge voltage. The selection should be in accordance with IEC 6164312. SPD should always show green lifetime indicator. Replace the device when the indicator shows red color. Now it is quiz time. Please continue to the next session.